Welcome to another episode of Sipnayan Hub. This is the first episode of a series focused on mathematical language and symbols. But before we continue, do not forget to like this video, hit the subscription and notification bell to stay updated of future videos. Let us begin by imagining this scenario. You traveled through deep space to visit a planet called Sipnaris where everyone is a genius mathematician, the Sipnayans. You entered a coffee shop and noticed two Sipnayans talking. Here is a part of their conversation. Obviously, you did not understand anything from that conversation. But is it because they were talking complex things? It's not. It's because you simply did not understand their language. Perhaps they were just laughing at you. This situation has a very strong analogy in mathematics. People frequently have trouble understanding mathematical ideas, not necessarily because the ideas are difficult, but because they are being presented in a foreign language, the language of mathematics. Yes, mathematics is just a form of language. And if you know nothing about the language, then obviously you would never understand the ideas being expressed. What are the purposes of mathematics? Like any language, it is to understand the expressed ideas. This is the reason why we can understand the written mathematics of ancient civilization. And the most interesting part of it is we are able to understand how they think, their cultures, and their way of life. It is also a language that has been understood and used by people to exchange ideas. Ideas that have greatly improved their lives. Some of these mathematical concepts has even led to developments that revolutionized human life and resulted to the modern world that we are experiencing today. To show to you that mathematics is just a form of language, let us compare it to a language that we are familiar of, the English language. In the English language, we use letters, and by combining these letters, we form words. Words are symbols for objects around us. If we combine these words, we then have our phrases and then our sentences, and then our paragraphs. In mathematics, though, we use numbers, operations, objects like sets, matrices, and others. We use a different symbol other than using the letters, just like what we do when we form our sentences in the English language. Under the English language, we can actually identify the differences of the different parts of speech like nouns, verbs, pronouns, and adjectives. In mathematics, although we do not have a specific term or an equivalent for nouns, verbs, and pronouns, or other parts of speech, we can actually identify likeliness such as numbers, they could be our nouns, our different operations such as addition and subtraction for our verbs, and and variables to counterpart our pronouns. We even have something that describes numbers like of being prime or even. A number can either be prime or even or odd or amicable. We have those terms in mathematics. As I mentioned a while back, a group of words conveying a complete thought is an English sentence. But in mathematics, if we group expressions, in that group of expressions convey a complete thought, then it is called a mathematical sentence. Equations are examples of a mathematical sentence. Inequalities are other examples of a mathematical sentence. If we group sentences, English sentences, then it would comprise a paragraph. In mathematics, if we group uh, mathematical sentences like equations, they are called system of equations. We can indeed say that mathematics is a form of language. It's just different from the language that we know. 
here are the things that makes the language of mathematics different from an ordinary language of speech. The first one, mathematics is precise. We say mathematics is precise because we make very fine distinctions between and among the different mathematical objects. For example, in the English language, the word set might mean a lot of things. In fact, if we check our dictionary and search for the meaning of the word sets, it gives us a lot of things. It could be a verb, it could be a noun, etc. However, in mathematics, it's accurate. The definition is only one, and this is the definition used by all mathematicians around the world. Functions. In the English language, function could mean a different thing depending on how it's used. It could be used as a noun, it could be used as a verb. Under mathematics, functions will be strictly defined so that there will be no confusion that will arise later. Another characteristic of mathematics, it is concise. In the English language, we use the letters. They are the characters. The letters are the characters that are used as symbols for the sounds that we can make. In mathematics, we use a different set of symbols and for most of the symbols, they are really short. Even if the expressed idea is complex, uh, mathematics tend to use symbols because we want to be short yet clear and complete. Another characteristic of mathematics, it's powerful and it's powerful because we can actually solve a lot of things using this form of language. It's quite interesting, isn't it, that a language is too powerful that could revolutionize how we live today and in the future. It is not only in the English language that we talk about grammar. In mathematics, grammar means the structural rules governing the use of symbols representing mathematical objects like expressions, variables, and mathematical statements or sentences. We have our different operations, sets, relations, and functions, and even uh, an introduction to elementary logic. These objects are the main focus of this series. Because we want to learn the language of mathematics, we will familiarize ourselves with the most basic concepts that serves as a foundation of advanced mathematics. Let us begin with the concept of variables. Have you ever watched a movie involving a crime scene where the police or agents were not able to identify a dead body and just called that unidentified dead body John Doe or Jane Doe if it's a female? The name John Doe or Jane Doe is not really a specific name but a term that we use to mean that that body could be anybody. Later on, they would discover the real name of that unidentified body, but for now, they will just call it Jando while the identity of that body is still unknown. Variables can be thought of this way. It is a placeholder when you want to talk about something, but you imagine that it has one or more values, but you don't know what they are. For instance, I would let X be the next president of the Philippines. Since I don't know who is the next Philippine president, I would just call him or her X. I would like to propose to President X that the following community programs be supported. We also use variables because you want to say something in general about elements in a given set and so you don't want to be restricted to considering only a particular element. For instance, when we speak about all Filipinos in general, we may use the term Juan de la Cruz. This serves as a variable, a placeholder for any Filipino citizen. Another mathematical objects are our operations. An operation is a mathematical process that we do to yield a value given one or more mathematical objects such as numbers and variables. Let me give you examples of an operation. Additive inverse. When we say additive inverse of a number, 
it is actually the same number except that we negate the sign. If it's positive, then we make it negative. If it's negative, we make it positive. And if it's zero, of course, it remains zero. That is why the additive inverse of three is negative three. It's the same number, but we negate the sign from positive to negative. Additive inverse of negative five is five. It's the same number, it's five, except that it becomes positive from negative five. Multiplicative inverse, on the other hand, is synonymous to reciprocals. What do we mean by a reciprocal? We imagine a fraction and the reciprocal is identified by simply interchanging the numerator and the denominator. So for example, the multiplicative inverse of 2 is 1 half because the denominator of 2 is 1 and the numerator is 2. So if you interchange it, it becomes 1 half. The multiplicative inverse of 3 fourths is 4 thirds. We simply interchange the numerator and the denominator. We do not change the signs. That is only for the case of additive inverses. Another example of an operation is the very popular addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. I believe we are all familiar with this, so I would not expound it in detail. Let us go back with our additive inverses and multiplicative inverses. These operations are examples of a unary operation because these are operations that are applied to a single number and can yield another number. For example, additive inverse is applied to a single number 3 and the result is negative 3. Multiplicative inverse is applied to a single number 2 and the result is one half. These operations, additive inverse and multiplicative inverse, are called unary operations. The four fundamental operations that you know are not unary but are binary operations because they are operations that are used between two or more numbers. For example, you can only add at least two numbers. It does not make any sense when you say five plus. It is an operation that has to be applied between two or more numbers. So you give n 5 and 2, if you add it, that's the only time you can give a result, which is 7. Same goes through the next operation, subtraction. You need at least two numbers to apply the operation. It's binary operation from the prefix by, which means two. Another mathematical object, we call them expressions. They are formed by combining numbers and or variables using the different operations of mathematics. Here are some examples of an expression. We have a variable x. If we add 1, the result would be x plus 1, and then we multiply 2. So it is just expressing that we have an unknown number. We add 1. After that, we multiply the result by 2. Another expression, we have an unknown number x. We subtract 3, the difference, we take the square root. So it involves two operations, subtraction and taking the square root. Also with the first one, it involves two operations, addition and multiplication. The third expression, we have x squared. It is expressing that a number is being squared. That's it for our first episode. In the next video, we will compare and contrast expressions in mathematical sentences or statements. I will see you there.